How's it going everybody? My name is Cameron White and welcome back to your favorite monthly horoscope, this time for March of 2024, Aquarius, Sun and Rising. Thank you guys so much for being here, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, we have a lot to talk about this month, so let's go ahead and jump straight into the horoscope. Um, to begin the month off March 4th, we are going to be having Venus ingress into Taurus. Now, Venus, of course, is the planet of love, money, value. She wants to stimulate your senses. She wants you to indulge in all of the finer things in life. And as Venus goes into Taurus, she's going to be entering her home sign. So Venus operates really well in Taurus. She has access to all of the resources and tools that she needs to do her job, uh, the best ability that she can. And as Venus goes into Taurus, she's wanting to focus on stability, on growth, on abundance, on, you know, what is going to be sustainable? What is really going to give us some security and some stability here? And as Venus enters Taurus, she's going to be entering your fourth house. So Venus is really going to be affluent and really bringing some more enjoyable qualities to your family life, your living situation, where you live, how you live, your parents, your family, how you, and where you center yourself as well. So this is going to be a really enjoyable transit for you, Aquarius Risings, uh, regarding your home life. So maybe you maybe want to stay home a little bit more, enjoy what you can while you're there. Um, but that's mostly what Venus is going to be doing. Nothing too crazy, but it is going to be really enjoyable. But also on March 4th is when we're going to be having Mercury retrogress back into Aquarius. Now, Mercury's been retrograding for a few weeks now in Pisces in your second house. So this has been focused on money. However, as Mercury goes back into Aquarius, this is where the focus gets brought onto yourself. We are talking about your first house of who you are, what you look like, your personality, how you react, how you respond. And as Mercury, while still retrograde, goes back into Aquarius, this is where we can kind of start brainstorming solutions in a more rational, more logical, different perspective than we were doing it before. With Mercury retrograding in Pisces, it was easy to get caught up in the mess. But as Mercury goes back into Aquarius, this is where you might be able to have an easier time being able to find solutions. Then the next thing that we've got going on is on March 9th, we're going to be having the full moon in Virgo. And as the sun's been in Pisces now for the past couple weeks, it's been illuminating and bringing awareness to your money, your resources, your finances, and what you physically own and possess. And as the sun's been going through here, going through changes, showing you what's there and what's not there, this full moon in Virgo is going to be happening in your eighth house. So the eighth house rules a lot of different things. Um, if you're in a relationship, the eighth house can be about your partner's money because it's the second house from the seventh house. The, se uh, the eighth house also is about um, inheritance, uh, debt, insurances, owed money. So this full moon in Virgo might be a good time to kind of go over your to-do list and go over your checklist of what needs to be attended to, what needs to be taken care of regarding money that you might owe or any debts that you might have. This full moon in Virgo is just going to bring illumination and awareness to any eighth house topics that are kind of going on for you. So that is something to be aware of. But also on March 9th is when we're going to be having Mercury finally stationed direct. Now, at this point where Mercury's been in retrograde in Aquarius, you've been kind of brainstorming some better ideas. Mercury stationing direct is where you can start applying those ideas and applying that rationale a lot easier. With Mercury being in your first house, this does have to come back down to you, and this is about you and what you're speaking, what are you communicating, and what is your mindset, especially since Mercury's been retrograding in Pisces, and what's your mindset around money? What have you been doing with your finances and your money, and what, you know, this might be the time where you need to start game planning something different. But a few days after that, on March 16th, is when Mercury goes back into Pisces. Now, Mercury is going to be going through its shadow phase at this time. So this is going to be the third and final time we have to kind of focus on this money issue stuff for you guys. But as Mercury is in Pisces, you know, this is what I've been kind of saying in my videos is Mercury wants to hand deliver, you know, a message on, you know, in ink, on paper, um, to where it's clear and legible. But Mercury in Pisces kind of, you know, is jotting notes down with a highlighter on their hand and by the time they get to the place where they have to, you know, deliver the message. The, you know, notes are all smeared and it's hard to read. So Mercury just kind of has to go off the cuff and kind of remember what it wrote down. So it's not clear, but it's about understanding what's being said and being loose with your interpretation. Mercury, as it goes through Pisces, being in detriment, like that's the idea of Mercury doesn't have access to the resources and tools it usually needs, like a piece of paper and a pen. It only has, you know, its mind. So Mercury can kind of confuse some of the details. 
But with that being said, as Mercury goes through your second house, I think this is just about being a little bit more observant and more aware of what's going on with your money and what's going on with your resources and what are you doing with that stuff. Mercury in Pisces is going to help you be a little bit more clear, understand that you're walking through a fog. And just like when you're, let's say you're driving in the fog on a, you know, on a mountain, you're going to go a little bit slower because you really don't know when that next corner is going to be. So as Mercury goes through Pisces, maybe slow down with your money a little bit. Be a little bit more aware of where you're investing your time and your energy with your finances and your money. Then we jump to March 20th when the sun enters Aries and this begins the spring equinox. The sun really likes to be in Aries. This is the sun's exaltation. Uh, <clears throat> This is the sun's uh, exalted sign. The sun likes to be in Aries because if you think about it, days are getting longer, sun is getting brighter, it's getting warmer outside, things are beginning to grow. And as the sun moves into Aries, this is also gonna be moving into your third house. Now the third house was a lot of different things and something I quote a lot is something from Dane Rudgier of that, the first house is who you are, second house is what you have, and the third house is how you use it. And as the sun goes into your third house, this is gonna be bringing awareness and illumination to how you are utilizing yourself and your talents and gifts and abilities. The third house also has to do with speaking. How are we speaking? How are we writing? How are we communicating? Third house also has to do with siblings and neighbors, things in your local proximity as well as short distance travel. So the sun is just gonna be bringing illumination to this area to where you can kind of see it a little bit better and do with it as you will. But the big thing that we've got going on in March, especially for you Aquarius risings, is on March 21st, we're gonna be having Saturn ingress into Aquarius. This is gonna be a huge shift for you guys. Um, there's a lot to talk about, so listen up. Um, Saturn's going to ingress into Aquarius on March 21st. It's going to stay there until July 1st, where it will then retrograde and go back into Capricorn um, until basically the end of the year. Then at the end of the year, Saturn will go back into Aquarius, where it will stay for another three years. So this three-month window that we have from now until July is really going to give us a big taste of what the next three years are going to be about. So make sure you're paying attention to this transit, and I really don't even feel like I need to say that because you're going to be very aware of it because Saturn's moving into your first house. There's a lot to kind of break down here, so give me a second. <clears throat> Saturn is that planet of limitations, restriction. Uh, Saturn tells you no, Saturn puts you in a box. Saturn wants things to be a specific way. Um, and on the flip side, Saturn asks you to be more responsible, to be more mature, to be more committed uh, to your obligations, to you know, be more responsible. And Saturn and Capricorn, you know, this is the analogy I've been using, so I guess I'll just continue with it. Capricorn is kind of like a, a corporate mindset. You know, what's the cheapest, the, the fastest, most efficient way to do things? It's kind of like, you know, an office with no windows, no AC or heater with old computers. Like, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's cheap and it gets the job done, but it's kind of, you know, it kind of sucks, but it's the most efficient system that they can use to, you know, save money so they can spend it on other things. Aquarius is kind of like Google. Like, yeah, you're still working in an office, but you know, there's windows, there's a fucking playground, um, you know, there's updated computers, so it's easier to work. And I make that, you know, analogy because as Saturn goes, as was in Capricorn doing things the old way, Saturn's gonna move into Aquarius, it's gonna be about doing things in a new way. But the big thing here, really for you guys, is Saturn's moving from your 12th house to your first house. This is a pretty big shift. As someone who has lived this not even that long ago, you're gonna feel it. Because the Saturn's in your 12th house, uh, the 12th house is all about repressed and unacknowledged parts of ourselves, things that we can kind of ignore or put on the back burner. The 12th house also has to do with isolation, alienation, being a little bit more alone and retreated. And as Saturn goes from your 12th to your first, this is where, you know, like Saturn in your 12th can feel like you have a lot of walls and obstacles in the back of your mind and they're coming out into your real world, but you don't really know the, the medium of which they're getting out into the world. It's kind of like all these walls are in your way, you don't really know where they're coming from. As Saturn moves into your first house, the walls are gonna be right in front of you and you'll know where they're coming from. And Saturn going in your first house is gonna be about you. Where are you feeling more limited? Where are you feeling like you're putting yourself into a box? But the other thing is with Saturn and Aquarius, this is about doing things differently. This is about doing what's gonna work best for you. Like we said with Capricorn, it's about doing things cheap and efficient. Aquarius is about going, hey, what's gonna be best for me and all of the parties involved? What is the most rational way to do this? What is the most logical way to do this? Rather than the cheapest and the fastest, what's gonna create the best results and what's going to help me and help everyone else involved? 
So there's a different mindset with this, but as Saturn goes into your first house, this is gonna ask you to be more self-responsible, to take yourself more seriously, to be more mature, to be more committed to who you are. And as Saturn also transits your first house, it's gonna challenge you with, you know, having to overcome self, like barriers that you can put on yourself. Saturn transiting your first house is a time where you feel like, you know, you're carrying a really big weight and it's all on you. But this is gonna be a time in your life that really defines who you are. And maybe this is your first go around with Saturn going over your ascendant or your second go around. Either way, this is what it's gonna look like, but this is really gonna shape a big part of your life. So this is, I, I personally think this is gonna be more enjoyable than Saturn in your 12th house, which usually Saturn in both houses is gonna suck, but you had Saturn Pluto in your 12th house. Saturn is gonna go through your first house. It's gonna feel a lot lighter and eventually Jupiter will be there too. This is exciting in my opinion. So you don't have anything too much to worry about. And then the next thing that I wanna talk about is on March 22nd, uh, the next day we have Mars conjoining Pluto. Now, I really don't ever talk about Pluto, let alone transits to Pluto. Um, but I did wanna bring this up because Mars-Pluto conjunctions kinda of bring up power struggles. And um, with this going on in your 12th house, this can get a little bit gnarly. You know, Mars conjoining, Mars has been in Capricorn for some time. Mars is exalted in Capricorn, it loves to be there, it works really hard there, it's putting in 80 hours a week, and um, when Mars conjoins Pluto, this might be the time where, you know, you could be working so hard on something that it's time for you to clock out, like it's time for you to give yourself a rest. But Mars conjoining Pluto might also be that time where you hit that wall and it's time to break through that wall. And that's kind of asking a lot, but, um, I wanted to bring this up because as it's happening in your 12th house, this might come out of nowhere. The 12th house is a hidden house. It does rule hidden enemies. It's a blinding house. You don't always see what's going on there. So as this happens, you know, kind of expect the unexpected, but also you kind of expected it. Um, with this going on, this is gonna be kind of one of those heightened tension moments. So just be prepared for uh, on, March 20th, uh, on March 22nd when Mars does conjoin Pluto. And then on the next day, we have the new moon in Aries. This is exciting because new moons, of course, are a time to level out our energy, you know, get a little bit clearer of where our intentions are and kind of shift our focus to just one area. And this is in Aries. This is about what are we initiating? What are we starting? What do we identify with? And this is happening in your third house of your ability to use the tools that you have, how you speak, where you're going, who you have around you. So this new moon in Aries is gonna be an exciting time to kind of get a clear idea of what's next for you, what challenges, you know, now that Saturn's in your first house, this new moon in Aries is, you know, kind of about going like, what's next? But then we get to the end of the month and on March 30th, that's when we're gonna be having Mars ingress into Aquarius. Now, Mars again has been in Capricorn for quite some time and Mars likes to be in Capricorn, but does things by the book in Capricorn. Very much like perfect employee, perfect student type, you know, um, analogy. Mars going into Aquarius is kind of about doing what you're gonna do. Mars in Aquarius can deal with, you know, being alienated, being isolated a little bit, but Mars in Aquarius is about, again, doing things differently. Not by the book, but by what's gonna work best for you. You know, you don't put, you don't give a plumber, you know, uh, an IT job. You give an IT tech an IT job. Same thing, you give a plumber a plumbing job. And Mars in Aquarius is about finding where to put your energy for that's gonna fit the best for you. Now, the problem is though that Mars is gonna be going in your first house. Mars heats things up, so it causes energy, but Mars also severs, cuts, stings, pierces. Um, and as it's going through your first house, this might be brought on to you, since the first house is about your sense of self, your personality. Mars might make you a little bit more angry, and, and Mars also rules fights and conflicts. So as Mars is in Aquarius in your first house, you might see yourself getting a little bit more heated up, getting a little bit more agitated than normal. But the big thing is, as Mars ingresses into Aquarius, it's gonna be conjoining Saturn. So this is kind of about disciplining that energy and kind of putting a container around it and kind of going like, hey, I've got this Mars in Aquarius, let's you know train it, let's do something with it so we can you know make it productive. Now, the other big thing too is, I don't remember if I mentioned this already or not, so I'm just gonna say it again. Um, Mars is conjoining Saturn at zero degrees Aquarius, which is cool, but Jupiter is also gonna be conjoining Saturn at zero degrees Aquarius at the very end of this year when they both ingress into Aquarius. That's to say that this, in, this Mars ingress at zero degrees Aquarius might come up in a really big way later on at the end of this year. So try your best to remember what kind of goes on at the end of March. I think it'll be pretty easy for you guys since a lot of it's in your first house. A lot of it's gonna be extremely impactful for you. Um, but I do think that something uh, at the end of this month is gonna come up pretty big for you guys at the end of this year. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, 
But that's what I got for you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. One thing, um, I, there was a lot of, there was a few transits I didn't talk about in this horoscope. I wanted to keep it focused on the main events that are going on. That's why we kind of meant when I wanted to do something a little bit new with these monthly horoscopes. Also, I haven't done these in like six months, so I wanted to try something a little bit different. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below as well. If you have any personal planets that are going to be affected by these transits more, please let me know. And, you know, let me know you know, what goals you have, what do you want to get accomplished in March? What do you think is going to change for you in March as the astrology continues? Um, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know what's going on for you guys. Um, and with that being said, thank you guys so much for being here, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing to all my videos. I love and appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be seeing you next month.